Hey everyone, this is Janet uh, with Yoga with Janet. And today we are going to use the blocks. We're gonna have a little block party. Um, I love these little guys. So you will need two of them. I'm sitting on one right now. It's between my heels. And this is gonna be an hour flow practice, a slow flow. Uh, prepping you for wheel pose or Urdhva Dhanurasana, as well as Pinchamayurasana, forearm stand. We're gonna get a little bit of everything with this one, so be prepared to sweat and to effort, and hopefully through that effort, you will be able to find a bit of focus and ease um, to receive that back. So go ahead and you're going to get started in Virasana. I'm going to do this from the side because I think it's a nice visual. So you'll bring the block just between your heels. You might need two or just sit on a pillow. If you don't have blocks, it doesn't matter. Just sit on your shins and then uh, just close your eyes. So it's always nice to start the practice with a few moments of turning in because really that's what yoga is about is you know this process of uh, going inwards and I always say in class um, never like leave your shit at the door um, you don't have to forget about your life when you come onto your mat um, it's also this process of bringing everything that you have with you um, and using it as a time to sift and sort through um, and just recognize exactly where you're coming from. Start to notice your breathing. And just your awareness may automatically make it a little bit deeper and smoother. And then lift your lower back, broaden the chest and illuminate the spine. Slight tuck of the chin. The chin and the forehead are in the same line. Take a couple more breaths. Great, open your eyes and grab your cheeky little block. Lucky you if you have a foam block. And you can do this without a block as well. Um, it's a little bit easier. Now bring the block out in front of you and lengthen your fingers. So you're palming the block rather than grabbing it. You'll lengthen the fingers and then draw the shoulders back into their sockets. Again, regrow the spine tall. So lift the lower back and lengthen the spine. I'm gonna start to lift your block overhead. And, and as you lift the block, notice if the ribs flare. I want you to do the same thing, lifting the block, but no ribs popping out. So you pull the ribs down towards the frontal hips, and then the block um, will reach above your head. Notice the arms are probably at a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna refer to the upper arm a lot today, and that is this portion. So when our arms are above our head, it feels like more of the lower arm, but we're gonna call this the upper arm. Right. Let's stay here, squeeze into the block, lengthen the fingers, and then begin to bend your elbow so the block comes behind you. The upper arm is in cement, it doesn't move. Right. And then straighten. Right. So we're not bringing the elbows down. You bend. And then lift the upper arm and straighten. Let's squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And one more. Bend. 
to the elbows. Keep that upper arm in cement. Elbows wrapping in. And straighten. And then release all the way. You should really start to feel the heat build and the blood flow in. And bring the blocks to the top of the mat. And then step forward into a rag doll. So I love a little integration at the beginning of class where you can kind of thread that through and just a little preparatory for what's to come. Lots of blocks. Release your arms. And then slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time. Feeling everything. Bring your feet together to touch. And then bring your hands into your heart. Breathe in, reach the arms up. Press palms. And then exhale, dive forward and fold. And breathe in. Lengthen the heart forward. And then step your right foot back. And lower the knee, flatten the toes, and sweep the arms up. Now you're going to bring your hands to the frontal hips and lift them up. So the frontal hip, rather than lunging and spilling, you're going to lift it away from the front thigh. Deep breath in. And then bend your right elbow, clasp it with your left hand, and press the skull back into your forearm. And stabilize through the front foot, and just a little lean over to the left. But this is really valuable, the side body stretch. And for stretching the lats, the side body, preparing for um, back bends. These muscles need to be able to stretch and open. We lift our arms above our head. Good. And then you'll circle all the way down. You'll feel a stretch along the back. And release your hands down. Half split straight in the front leg. Flex the toes towards the face. And breathe in. Find the length. And fold. Flex the pinky toes. Pull the femur bone back into the socket. And then step your left knee back to meet the right. And you'll just walk your hands forward onto your fingertips. I love this one. I always use this. Draw the belly in. And then melt down through the chest. But at the same time, rather than collapsing, pick up through the front ribs and the belly. So there's a buoyancy and a lift underneath the body. It's like uh, it, there's cold water down there and you're trying to not touch it. And then lower the forearms and slide through onto your belly on your forearms now. <laughs> And then you're going to slide all the way down and reach your arms out in front of you. You'll bring the block between your hands and the forehead will come to the mat. Point the toes, lift the knees, and then lift the belly so you can feel the belly lift away. There may be some light that passes. But, and then the forehead will stay down. And just lift your legs and then lift your arms. Good. And it's like you're stretching in opposite directions. Forehead stays down, arms lift. So the upper arm bone lifts up. Three, two, and release. Good. Slide the hands back by the ribs. Just come into baby cobra. Firm the elbows in. Lift the upper arm. And then downward facing dog. 
tuck the toes, lift the hips first down dog if you want to wiggle out. And then I usually say connect to stillness. Because it's a beautiful way to build heat. Spread the fingers, press down through the inner palm and lengthen through the pelvis. Good. Draw your left knee to your chest and step between your hands. Good. Take a runner's lunge. The pelvis is heavy, like there's an elephant on the bum, but the right thigh bone presses to the ceiling. From the left hip in, lift the belly, and then reach your arms by your ears. Biceps frame the face. And then it's like you're creating this line from the back heel through the fingertips. And again, the frontal hip lifts away from the front thigh. And release the hands. Let's step forward, forward fold. Good. Breathe in, lengthen the heart, and exhale, fold. Let's sweep the arms up, press the palms. And then circle the hands all the way back to the center of the heart. Good. Other side. Inhale. Arms up. Press palms. And exhale. Dive. As you fold, the hips don't go back. They stay on top of the heels the best you can. And then breathe in. Do you fold Step your left foot back. Lower the knee, flatten the toes, sweep the arms up. And frontal hips lift away from the front thigh, and that's the action of the top of the pelvis lifting, scooping. And reach the arms up. Notice that flare pulling through the ribs. Now bend your left elbow. Good. Grab it with your right hand. And press the skull back into the forearm. So rather than this looking at your phone action, you press the skull back. And then a little bend over towards the right. From the right hip in to level the pelvis. And then you'll circle down and around. Feel that stretch across the lower back and half split. Good. The hamstrings are really valuable, obviously, but um, to open them up specifically for um, dolphin and then prepping for pinchomayarasana or forearm balance to work towards the press. Lengthen the heart forward. And then step your right knee back to meet the left. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower the forearms down and the palms face up. I love this for any sort of um, dolphin or wheel prep. Lift the hands 45 degrees away, or just lift them on the ankle. And then take the thumbs out, and you'll feel these muscles wrap under the armpits. And you do little pulses out. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then you'll come back. If you have a block, you'll palm the block. Elbows on top or under the shoulders. Dome the back round the spine. Tuck the toes and again, elongate the fingers. Tuck the toes, lift your hips. And then just walk in. So again, we're avoiding the ribs. Pull in. Good. Press down through the forearms and the outer wrists and walk the feet in as much as you can. A couple more breaths. And then walk your feet back. Good. 
Find that full lengthening forearm plank. And again, front of hips towards the ribs. Lower the hips down. Great, all my blocks are already here. And you're gonna press your palms into your block. So same thing as before, forehead down. Point your toes, lift your knees, lift the belly. But a little bit different this time. You're gonna lift the legs. Forehead stays down, lift the arms. And we're gonna do those pulses or the bends. Start to bend your arms Good. and lift the upper arms and straighten. Good. And so you don't want your arms to touch the mat at all. Bend. Notice if the elbows touch, lift the upper arms, bend. And straighten. Good. One more. Belly pulls in. Bend. Wrap the elbows in. Lift the upper arms and straight. Ufta. That's what they say in Minnesota. Ufta. Bring your hands by the ribs. Cobra. Or upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Bring the hands out. Step your right foot forward and come into the deep lunge. Knee over ankle, thigh bone parallel to the mat. So the hip and the knee are in the same line. Firm the right hip in and then stretch your heart forward to lengthen the spine. Now lift the fingertips, hover, and you want to draw the shoulders back. Heart forward and reach your arms on the diagonal. Biceps by the ears. Three. Two. And release. Step forward. Release the head. And then slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time so you can just feel everything. So that's our Warm up. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. We're gonna move into a little standing back bend and we're gonna do it with the arms above the head because this is ultimately where we're gonna go for wheel. So you'll draw the feet together, heels and toes touch. You're welcome to take any variations if you want hands to low back if you do. Um, draw the tailbone down and again, same thing. Lift the front of the hips up. Reach your arms above your head. And you're going to prioritize length over depth. Take a steeple grip, release the index finger, reach up. Good, look up. And then start to draw a line along the ceiling as you reach up and back, up and back. Avoid sticking the bum out. So the tailbone presses forward, lift front of the hips, lift. Couple more breaths. And then slowly come all the way up let him reach forward and again notice the arms don't drop they lift in line with the ears so you come all the way down breathe in lengthen Good. and fold let's step back just to downward facing dog Come down dog, lift your right leg to the ceiling. And then bend the knee, open your hip. And then you get a nice little hip flexor quad stretch, which is great for the wheel prep. Get a little twist in the spine, which is really valuable. Side body stretch. And then draw your knee to your chest. And step forward. I lunge into the knee. Place the back heel 45 degrees for warrior one. Firm the right hip in and sweep the arms up. 
And you press into the blade edge of the back foot, lift through the inner knee, and then drive your right knee forward. That option to press the palms. And then warrior two. And then stretch the arms apart. And bend deeply into your right knee. And again, firm the right outer hip in. The knee tracks in line with the second and third toe. Pull the ribs away from the front inner thigh. Windmill the arms down, frame the right foot. And then lower your left knee. You can bring your left hand under a block if you have one. Just a little bit of height and then sweep your right arm back. And you can pad the back knee if you like. You'll pick up the foot. You can use a strap. And if you don't have the foot, just squeeze the heel to the bum and you'll get um, what we're looking for is strength in the hamstring. And then rather than dipping through the pelvis, you pick the front of the pelvis up and then pull the foot in. So we're getting a little bit of a tuck. Tailbone presses forward into pelvis. And I always say grab the pinky toe side so your shoulder and chest are open. And then release. Step your right knee back to meet the left. Place the forearms down. Palm the block. And, and getting that sensation, upper arms wrapping in. And forearms parallel. Shoulders on top of elbows, dome the back. Tuck the toes, lift the hips. Dolphin, walk the feet in. And you can stay here, lifting the heels, or option to lift your right leg. And again, press down to lift, and you're lifting from the right inner thigh. One more breath. Release the foot, walk your feet back, forearm plank, find the length and lower down okay no block for this one bring the forehead to the mat slide the hands back by the ribs and again firm the upper outer arms in and up lift the chest and lift the feet lift the chest lift the feet lift the thigh bones up and then interlace the hands behind the back, punch the fist back, lift the chest. And then three times we squeeze the heels in towards the bum and release, chest stays lifted. Squeeze, heels towards the bum, lift the thighs and release. But one more time, squeeze, heels to bum and lift the thighs up and then release forehead to the mat. You can look in one direction and the other direction and just soften. You can give your hips a little wiggle to release the low back. And then hands by the ribs. Again, cobra or upward facing dog. And then down dog. I like to come off of my mat somehow. and then lift now your left leg bend the knee open the hip and you can take a little twist in the spine a roll and then step through between the hands come to the fingertips lunge first then place the back heel 45 degrees. So you're working the deep bend. And then sweep up, warrior one. Option to press the palms and it's the same work. Lift the front of the hips. 
Grow tall. Warrior two. Separate the arms and then deep bend into your left knee now. The shoulders stack right on top of the hips. There might be a tendency to reach forward. And then windmill the arms down, frame the left foot. All right, lower your right knee. Option to bring your right hand underneath the block. Sweep your left arm back. And find the foot. And then squeeze the heel in and lift the front of the hips up. Shoulder stays open. And you can sort of just explore where you have sensation. It'll be different whether it's more the quad or the psoas. And then release the foot. And again, step left knee back to meet the right. There's a pattern here. And place the block down, palm the block. Elbows down, dome the back, shoulders over elbows, tuck the toes, lift the hips, and walk the feet in so the hips come more over the elbows. We don't want the shoulders forward, press them back, and then lift your left leg this time if you're lifting. It's just a little build on. Three, and two, press down through the outer wrists, and release. Good, walk the feet back, forearm plank, heart forward, and lower the pelvis. Okay, this is our last round of our belly back bends, and we're gonna move into bow. And you'll only do this if you can grab your feet at the same time. If you can't, I want you to just continue contracting the hamstrings and strengthening the back by lifting the chest and squeezing the heels in towards the bum. Slide the hands back by the ribs. Let lift the chest, lift the legs. Reach your arms back and then take the interlace. Punch the fist back. Perfectly great place to stay or bend the elbows, squeeze, but you can stay here, or if you can grab the feet at the same time, and then you kick and lift. And think of lifting the chest and the thighs, chest and the thighs, chest and the thighs. For this, the breathing will need to stay more around the upper chest rather than into the belly. And then slow release. Bring a cheek to the mat. Let the shoulders roll down. And soften. I like big toes together. Heels apart. So that the sacrum widens. You can give a little sway of the hips. You can even windshield wiper the shin side to side. Feels really nice in the lower back. Then you'll release your legs. Slide the hands by the ribs. Squeeze the arms in, lift, and then upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. And then from down dog, you'll walk the hands back towards the feet. And slowly roll up. Great, roll the shoulders up, back and down. I'm just gonna come to standing. Reach your right arm 
behind you and you can grab it with the elbow. And again, notice the head, press the skull back into the forearm and notice the ribs and the bum. Can you draw the tailbone forward and draw the ribs into the back body? So it's like the front body moves into the back body, back body moves into the front body, the sandwiching action. You can stay here or you can take your other arm out, spin the thumb down and slide it up the middle of the back. You can grab onto your t-shirt or if you have a strap. And if you have the fingers, I think being active, finding that clasp, draw the elbows towards the midline. And same thing, tailbone forward, ribs pull in. I like a little side bend here too. This can feel nice. And then come all the way back up and release and go slow and you just feel the blood flow back into the arms. And then bend your left elbow, press the skull back into forearm. Take your arm out to the side Spin the thumb down, palm back, and begin to slide the hand up the middle of the back. A little bit of wiggling. That's good. And then if you have the grip, see if you can make it active. Both sides of the waist even. Head presses back to lengthen the back of the neck. And you'll come all the way to the back of the mat, which is where you probably were. Release the arms and just feel the blood flow back in. Might feel a little bit tingly. Release the hands. And Inter actually interlace the hands at the base of the spine and tuck your chin and roll down one vertebrae at a time. Away down and, and then walk up downward facing dog from down dog center the left foot lift your right leg to the ceiling and again you can bend the knee open the hip can feel really nice to stretch the side body take a little twist don't worry about squaring the shoulders and draw your knee in and step between your hands. Okay, fingertips. Lunge, so we've done this before. Right hip in, left thigh to ceiling. Now you're gonna grab a block and you might not like this so much, but it's good for you. So you'll start to reach your arms forward, bicep by the ears. So we don't wanna round, we stretch the spine and we're not dropping the arms. Arms in line with the face. I'm doing it with you. Lucky me. Good. And now you'll start to bend your elbow so the block comes behind you without dropping the upper arms. And straighten. Two more times. Bend, firm the elbows in and lift the upper arms. And straighten. One more. You can feel the work. You can hear me. I lift the upper arms. Good, straighten, straighten, straighten. And release. Okay, press the back heel down. Bring the block inside the heel. Good. And now take a deep bend into the right knee. Block is on the highest height, coming into side angle. Press the upper outer arm to the inner thigh and reach your left arm to the ceiling. Good. Draw your right shoulder back, shoulder blade down the back, left arm lifts. And firm the right hip in. Now spin the palm back 
and take the half bind. And you can find your inner thigh or just your waistband. And you might even be able to find your right glute and you firm that in as well. Chest back. And now look down. You'll place the block a foot forward. And start to lift your left leg up to the ceiling. Firm the right hip in. Good. Front toes are in line with the knee or knee in line with the toes. And then option to bend your left knee and find the foot, the ankle, and getting that nice front of the hip stretch again. Chapasana. And then you'll slowly release everything. Step left foot back, hands down, knee down. Okay, now we know right knee back, forearms down. Dolphin, this class has five dolphins. Five options for forearm stand. I'd dome the back, lift the knees, and then step the feet in. Lift your right leg, and then option to lift up. Good, firm the inner thighs together. And then if you like, option to bend your top leg and look through the window. And then you look back, straighten, and lower. And lower the knees, and you can either come onto your shins, I find that I can breathe more easily up here, or child's pose. And then downward facing dog. So, no flow in between. Moving to other side, lift the leg, bend the knee, open the hip. And then draw your knee to your chest, step through, come to fingertip lunge. Pelvis heavy, right thigh to ceiling, heart forward. Lift the frontal hip away from the front thigh Hands to the block. Here we go. Last time. Good. Reach your arms forward. Long diagonal. Firm the left hip in. And then begin to bend the elbows. Bring the block behind you. And straighten. Good. Bend. Good. And then lift the upper arms. So from the front, you don't want the elbows to widen. They stay wrapping in. Straighten, last one, bend. Good, lift the upper arms and straighten and release. Okay, place the back heel, little bit turned in and the block will come just inside the heel or behind it. Place your left hand and then bend your left knee deeply. Firm the left hip in and reach your right arm to the ceiling. Draw the shoulders back and down, and it's a spiraling, it's a twist. So right ribs pull back, left lung under, top hand spins back, and your hand will come to the inside of the thigh, waistband, whatever you have to grab onto. Move the lower back into the forearm and then take the gaze down. Front knee tracks in line with second and third toe the whole way. And then place the block and lift your right leg. Firm the left hip in. And then option 
to bend your right leg and then maybe find the ankle. If you have the ankle, whoo, she's a little wobbly today. Good. Stretch through the top knee. And again, frontal hip away from the thigh bone. Release. And then right hand down. Step your right leg back. And I swear to God, this will be the last dolphin forearm stand. I'm not used to doing the whole practice as I teach. Tuck the toes, press the mat away, shoulders over elbows, lift the hips, and walk the feet in. Okay, now lift your left leg up and play with that press or the lift. Inner thighs hug in. Good. Active feet and then option to drop the head through and bend the top leg. And just come out when you're ready. I'm cooked. <sighs> Ultimately trying to come out as slowly as you come in, but you know, life happens. Open the chest and just feel your breathing, feel that effort. Feel the beat of your heart, right? the intensity. Okay, and then make your way onto your back. I said we would do wheels, so we've arrived. We'll start with bridge. Draw the shoulders down the back. Your feet are hip width distance in parallel. You should be able to touch your heels with your fingers. Draw the shoulders. I like to say, imagine you're already in upward facing dog. Puff up the chest. And then we'll come into bridge to begin just to turn the legs on more, even though they're quite warm. But tuck the tailbone under. And this is the action that we're looking for in our wheel and then peel away, peel away without, you know, you don't want the bum to drop in the chest to lift. We tuck and we lift. And then press the shins back so that the back bend comes into the upper chest. And press the elbows down. And again, lift the tailbone up into the pelvis. You should feel your legs. Working inner thighs wrap down. And then slowly you reverse. So upper back first, roll through, keep the tuck all the way down. And just soften. So you can stick with the bridge, or you can move into the wheel with me. And feet hip width distance apart, and draw the shoulders down the back. We're gonna start with the hands by the ears. So this is valuable whether you're coming up or not, and you start to get more of that opening between the torso and the upper arm, which is what is necessary to come up. Firm the elbows in. You can even turn the hands out a little bit. Takes a little bit of pressure off. And then draw the tailbone under and slowly roll up all the way. So we come into our little maximum bridge place. So the legs are working chest to chin. And then you'll come just to the crown of the head. Again, reaffirm the elbows in. Good, that's that work of that underarm chest to the back wall and then squeeze the shins to the forearms and then press up using your legs. The tailbone up into the pelvis. Stretch the back of the neck. 
Just let it relax. And breathe. When you're ready, elbows continue to wrap in. Crown of the head. Tuck the chin. And then we go upper back, ribs in. But all the way, pelvis tucks all the way down. Feet wide, knees in. And because we're already here, we're going to do one more. Shoulder blades down the back, puff the chest. And then for this one, I want you to see if you can work the continual movement so we don't stop at the crown of the head. We're going to keep going through the full range, almost like rippling through. And then we'll ripple all the way back down through each segment of the spine. Draw the shoulder blades down the back. And then flip the hands by the ears, maybe even a little bit more towards the skull. Elbows squeeze in so that your forearms are parallel. And then just slowly tuck the tailbone and ripple up one vertebrae at a time. Come into the maximum bridge and then you just keep going there's no stopping you press 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 and then squeeze forearms to shins you can walk your feet in if you need to shins back relax the back of the neck tailbone up into the pelvis And then we come down, same way. So the elbows bend first. Tuck the chin, tailbone tuck still. Upper back, ribs in. Good, tuck the tailbone, melt through the spine. Feet wide, knees knock in. And these few moments to just sit in the residue. I'm gonna move into a short little cool down. We'll take the right thigh on top of the left. And you're gonna take your hips over to the right and drop your knees over to the left. If that's too much, you just stack the knees. You can just stay like that. Press your right shoulder down. And twists are actually a really good way to warm up for back bends. I didn't really, we didn't do any twists, um, which would have been a good idea. Um, sometimes it's hard to do it all. Um, but they're a really good way after the practice to decompress and neutralize through the spine. And then other side, move your hips back to center. Take the left thigh on top of the right. You can give it a little squeeze, that hip stretch. And then drop your knees over to the right. You can always use the blocks underneath the knees as well. Hmm. Your left shoulder down.
come back to center. Hug the knees into your chest. And you come up to seated. And you're just gonna take, we'll do one more little forward fold, which is a nice um, way to end the practice and kind of idea of turning back in. You can sit onto a block if you're someone who really rounds in the spine, just prop yourself onto a block. Um, we're gonna, let's see, I'll just take it out to the side. Uh, you will, um, you're sitting up onto the sit bones, hands by the hips, and then lift yourself up so you're as tall as possible. Just like how we started, lift the lower back, flex the toes towards the face so the feet stay in line with the knees, press the thigh bones down, and then start to fold forward. Keep the spine long, so I'd rather you stay here than round. And this is really nice for the inner thighs because we use them a lot, hugging them into the midline, keeping the pelvis in neutral, and wrapping them down for the back bending. up, walk the hands in, and bring the feet together, reach your arms forward, and start to roll down one vertebrae at a time. Lower back, mid back, upper back, and then lift the shoulder, or lift the chest to draw the shoulder blades down the back. I like to bend my knees tuck my bum under and then release the legs and then release the arms. Turn the palms up for a natural curl in the fingers and allow the toes to flop open and as much as you exert yourself and hold yourself up and almost this cling, clinging to the practice and whatever you're being told. And there at the end, there's this moment, this deep sense of surrender and offering, knowing that you are responsible for the work, but not responsible for the results or the fruits of the labor. And you have to generously sort of let go and know that that's enough for today. can relax for as long as you need. And I always say linger if you have time to linger. Otherwise you'll reach your arms above your head and take a big stretch. Like you're just waking up with a new clarity. But draw the knees into your chest. Give yourself a little hug. We'll rock side to side and then roll over to your left. 
And again, just paying attention to the transitions and taking your time. And slowly press yourself up to seat it. Lift the lower back and illuminate the spine. Little tuck of the chin to elongate the back of the neck. And then come back to your breath, always returning to that foundation. And just notice the effects of your practice. How does your practice support you? How does it motivate you? How does it uplift you? I'm just making a little mental note of how it makes you feel. Bring your hands into your heart. And just a little bow as a gesture of gratitude. Namaste.